Des Moines and all of Central Iowa, welcome to Max World Live. Max World is your world. Every day we talk about the issues and topics that matter most to you. And as always, it's your voice we want to hear in Max World. So join the conversation by calling 515 244 0077. And now, here's the host of Max World Live, J. Michael McCoy. Six minutes after the hour, four o'clock, it's the 26th day of uh, April. How are you today? Welcome. It's Max World Live here on 99.3. If this is the first time you're listening to the station, you're probably, you're, you're doing a deja vu, right? Now, wait a minute. That's, that's Mac, and it's Max World, and he was on 99.3, be- no, it wasn't 99.3, it was 98.3. Well, what, what is happening No, 98.3 went away, and so it's the good people of the Truth Network, Stu Epperson and Mike Carbone and Chris Roloff and all those wonderful people decided it was time to come into Des Moines in full force and make it happen. So they did, and we are here. We've been here since July of last year, and um, my guess is we're going to be here for a long time. Especially if you listen to that letter I read last hour. It it seems like that Des Moines is still a community that likes to hear the truth. They want to hear the gospel preached, and they want to hear the truth. And as long as uh, there are people like that family who wrote to me, um, I'll come to work every day. I don't don't get a paycheck. I just do this. This is my... This is what God asked me to do after years and years and years of giving me success and failure in secular broadcasting... He said, okay, this is what I prepared you for. You thought it was to be a country guy or to be an alternative guy or to be a whatever guy. Well, it's not. You're a God guy. Party of one God guy. And I want you to do this radio station for me. So here we are. Bob Montserrat, the cat in the hat watching the chat, my uh, compadre for the last uh, six years or more, uh, is watching the uh, Service Legend Truth text line at 809-0993. You can just dial that number. I did it the other day. I took Friday off last week because I I was running some errands and I just needed to do it. And so I heard him talking on the radio, so I tried the text line. Now, you didn't know it was me. But Frank Frank knew that it was me because he recognized the number. Right, right. He did. But you, you, when did you figure out it was me, or did Frank convince you? Frank convinced. Well, I, li- I did look at my phone and looked up your number. Oh, fine. I see how you are. And uh, uh, Frank's not here today. Yeah! Or, oh, boo, boo, sad. Frank's not here, man. I know. Frank's not here. That's Will Rogers. He's our guest. We're going to talk some politics and some uh, religion with, uh, with Mr. Rogers here in just a second. And, of course, we have Jeb. Jeb is our new producer, Jeb's now been here. Is this day seventeen? No, no, it'd be it'd be twenty-two. Twenty-two. Day twenty-two. And and this young man, listen to this, Will. So twenty-two times he's run this show. He was perfect on day fifteen. Absolutely perfect. I thought it was fourteen. Was it fourteen? I think it was. Okay, day fourteen then. He was perfect. Bob, I expect you to keep those statistics. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, Will Rogers is here. He's the uh, Polk County Republican chair. And, uh, uh, and do, is that public, what you just told me a minute ago? Uh, yes, absolutely. So, All right. so after the general election in November, you will be stepping down as chair of the Polk County Republicans. That's correct. We'll be holding the election for our county party leadership, which includes chair, co-chair, secretary, and treasurer which will all be elected two weeks after the general election. So that'll be a, a, the week of Thanksgiving, that Tuesday of the week of Thanksgiving. We'll be holding our election here in Polk County for those positions. And, and, and you've been sitting in a position of uh, service within the Polk County Republicans for how long? 
Um, it'll Nine at the years? end at, at the end of this, it'll be a total of almost eight years. Eight years. Uh, I'll have served as co-chair for two terms, our chairman for two terms, co co-chairman for a term, and also executive director for a year and a half as well. So, so I don't think it's any big secret. But why are you stepping down? I mean, are you, are you mad at somebody, or no, are you just no, fed no. up with it? And you no, think you the know. Republican Party's going down the tubes, or no, not no. That has. Quite honestly, Mac, I mean, it, it, there's a number of things, but the couple of things that I, I want to keep people to think about is there's a lot of commitment in terms of time and and money that it takes to be in a leadership position like this if you want to operate at a very high and effective level. And I think that's what we've done at Polk County while I've been involved in it. Um, I probably volunteer on average anywhere between 20 and 30 hours a week. A in, week? A week. A week? A week, yes. And you have a 40-hour full-time gig. Yes, I do. In fact, it's probably more than 40, isn't it? Well, it's a good it's a good place Because you travel a lot. I do have some travel. You're in the ag industry. I do work. I work with the agricultural equipment dealers and construction equipment dealers. But the reason why I say this is, you know, one of the reasons why I love doing the county chairman's job is, is that I get to help good people get elected to office. And we, we want to have good people in our elected offices, whether it be in the the White House or in Congress or U.S. Senate, but also then at the State House and then also even, you know, even at school board and city council. And it's a, it's a pleasure to help good people get elected to office and then also um, and help and help them make good legislation and good laws and good decisions. Yeah. Well, I, I want to talk to you a little bit about the Republican convention coming up. I want to talk to you a little bit about um, uh, I, I don't understand this whole delegate thing that's going on with Cruz and Trump. And depending on what channel you're watching at what time and who, I had Sam Clovis on here yesterday, and I love Sam Clovis, but I got that story because Sam works for Trump. Right. And over here, I talked to this gentleman over here, and of course, he's in, I get that story because he's in Cruz's camp. And, every, and everybody else is just kind of being quiet. There, I think there's a fed up to hear line, and we've passed it in so many cases. Well, you know, obviously, and people have obvi- uh, hopefully we're not going to wear out your uh, your uh, listeners with this. But, you know, there's this idea that this year there's the possibility of having a contested convention at the Republican convention in Cleveland, Ohio. Now, and when was the last the, time that happened? Um, well, there was a possibility of a contested convention back in 1976. And that was when Ronald Reagan ran against the incumbent Gerald Ford. Yeah. And. It didn't go to a second ballot. It actually took care of itself on the first ballot. Um, but that was obviously a, a very tough election year for Republicans. It was a post-Watergate election. Uh, Republicans had taken a, a, a pretty sound beating on a national level. Uh, and, and so in that particular election year, uh, you know, Reagan looked as the outside challenger was really taking on the status quo yeah. in, in Gerald Ford. And eventually what ended up happening is, is that there was enough negotiating, I guess, that went on behind the scenes. And and Gerald Ford ended up becoming uh, re- re-nominated, or he was never nominated, actually. He, just, he was nominated as our party nominee and went on to become the, uh, the pres- uh, presidential candidate for us. Now, why I want to say and that lost is... lost to Jimmy Carter. There's been other conventions, you know, in the history of our convention. I think... You know, you have to look back to the first Republican National Convention. I think Abraham Lincoln uh, finally won it on the fifth ballot. Mm. Um, you know, so there's been there's been other times in both Republicans and Democrats. It's not the end of democracy. It's actually a pretty healthy thing that we can go into a convention and have a contested convention. The the rules that they've been stated is that if I believe the number is 236 delegates have to vote for the person on the first ballot, 1,200, excuse me, 1,236, have to vote on the first ballot in order to have someone secure the nomination. Otherwise, it will go to subsequent, it'll go to subsequent ballots. Now, if let's say Donald Trump is short of committed delegates going into the convention, he could be very close to that. I still think he makes a very strong argument as to why he should be the party nominee. However, at the same time, I think it could be said that if he doesn't have the majority of the delegates, then it would be that you know he's probably not acceptable to the majority of people. It, it's still a, it, it's still going to be a convention 
that is going to probably likely decide the outcome. At that point, you could see a coalition form, by the way, of Trump and Kasich, Trump and Rubio, Rubio and Cruz, Kasich and Cruz. You know, I mean, Cruz being the probably the the presidential, one of those people being the vice presidential or a very strong appointment uh, in terms of a cabinet position. Uh, our guest today is Will Rogers. He's the current Polk County Republican chair. By the way, they've got a big event coming up this Friday, and uh, I'm going to tell you about it, and there's still some tickets available. You'll be able to see uh, Senator Ben Sass from the great state of Nebraska. Can I say that again? From the great state of the Cornhuskers. Forget everything else. It's just football over there. Uh, and he'll be at the Polk County GOP. Uh, tickets are still available at polkgop.com. Polkgop.com. How much are they? Starting off at $50, and that includes a f- 20 of that's in your meal cost alone. The rest of that money is going to go into our program to help us with our door knocker. Door knocking that we're going to do this summer. we got paid door knockers, and they're going to go out and target absentee balloting and early voting. And it's a great opportunity to help support our party. All right. And so when we come back, uh, I want to talk about those those ballots a little bit. And first time, second time. Because when they get to the second ballot, am I calling that the right thing? That's correct. Nobody has to vote for anybody. They are free to do what they want to do at that no, point. I shouldn't say it that way. They have to vote, but they don't have to vote they for can, the one that brought them. That's right. Yep. And at that time, Trump people could leave Trump. Yes. Cruz people could lose, leave Cruz. Correct. Is it even formidable that a Rubio could be our nominee? No. No. When I say that, I mean, I say that. Is it possible yes is it probable no no all right all right let's uh let's take our first break by the way you got questions we've got answers at least will does 515-244-0077 515-244-0077 or the service legends truth text line at 809-0993 it's your voice i want to hear live in max world Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you. Sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Hi. My name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. Hey, everybody. I brought Northern Lights pizza. And it's got Graziano sausage. (laughs) 
Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Good afternoon, 21 minutes after 4, 421. I want to do a, an afternoon traffic report. Bob, you, do you have the information on the traffic report? Because we wanted to give that traffic report today. Well, I didn't know that. You just... I didn't know you wanted the traffic well, I, report. I, I, it's real simple today. Everybody uh, going that way is going west. Yeah. And everybody going that way is going, it'd be east. So if you're heading west and the other guy, you can see the front of, he's going east then, right? If you can see the front of his car coming towards you. Sure. And if you're going like up, you're going north. And if you're going down, then you're going south. Right? And stay out of everybody else's lane. Don't speed. Be a good neighbor, and we'll all get home safely. That sounds good. I, like I think that. that's the best traffic yeah. report we could give. You. Traffic brought to you by Donald Trump. Very no, good. Not really. Uh, will Rogers is here. He's the Polk County Republican chair for just a few more months, as he will step down and uh, give his gavel up to the next qualified person, and that could be you. In fact, uh, after this next little talk we're going to have, I'm going to come back and I'm going to talk about. Well, I want to find out, Will, I want to find out, I'm kind of sarcastic, but I want to find out why, how I could become the Polk County Chair of the Republican Party. Because sure. anybody can do it, right? Yes. There, there, there's nothing you have to do beforehand, except I would assume be registered as a Republican. That would be a, that'd be a step one. Okay. I don't well, know how you would find the time, Mac. Well, it's just, I, I'm not, I don't really want to do it. Then they wouldn't have me. <laughs> I can't even get we don't even have a dog catcher in Clive and Dennis Henderson the city manager told me that I would never be elected dog catcher, dog catcher in Clive and I thought well I'm gonna check that out and find out what you got to do to be a dog catcher there is no dog catcher in Clive I want to be a dog catcher I want to grow up and be a dog catcher. Wouldn't that be fun? I want to be the Polk County weed commissioner but that's a story for another day is it okay I want to hear yeah. that all right, so um, you were starting to say that a third of the delegates heading to Cincinnati in June are Cruz supporters. Um, no, three quarters here in Iowa, I believe, would be people out of the... So we have this process after the caucuses. We have county convention, district yeah, convention, yeah. state convention. I would say that the majority of the people that were elected at the district conventions here a couple weeks back were Ted Cruz supporters. Now... Those people were, you know, Ted Cruz did win Iowa and he did get the, the good portion of the delegates. But there's still people that were that Cruz was awarded delegates. Rubio was awarded delegates. Trump was awarded delegates. And I think John Kasich even was awarded a delegate. And the reason why I bring that up is so these delegates are going to go to the national convention and people are going to vote the way they're supposed to vote on the first ballot. And after that, then they're kind of it's going to be a free for all. What if they don't vote for who they're supposed to? <clears throat> Well, I believe, and I'm not certain with the way the rules are specifically designed for Iowa's delegates, but I believe they are bound under a certain protocol under the first balloting process. Okay. All right. Now, if those people have dropped out of the race, there may not be a, those people like that one person that was a Kasich guy. Yeah. He can go and vote however he wants to vote, right? But these aren't people that John Kasich then nominated up the process. These are people that... Were well organized by Ted Cruz's organization. So, I'm sorry, Bob. You got a. I think you got a text over there, didn't you? Live from the Service Legends Truth Text Line. Go ahead, Bob. Well, since you're talking about delegates, the question is, what is a delegate? How are they chosen? And the same, another question. And why can't we just go based on people's individual vote? And I think this is what, yeah, uh, Trump brought up. Yeah, this is a great example. Okay, and. So on caucus night, we had a process based upon the portion of the portion of the vote here in Iowa, and it's different from state to state. But and by the way, 
the complaint that Donald Trump or his organization is having is about the rules. Well, these rules weren't something that was just, they were just put into place willy-nilly in the last week before the caucus or these primaries. These are things that have been in place for several months, maybe a year or even longer, that anybody getting into this should have at least invested some time and thought into figuring out. Now, that being said, I still would argue at the end of the day, the person who gets the most votes in terms of popular vote as well as winning of delegates prior to the convention probably should be odds on our candidate as a party. Now, in this particular situation, Ted Cruz could lose the majority of the majority of the delegates prior to the convention. He could lose the majority of the vote, you know, in terms of Donald Trump could beat him by millions of votes nationally. And yet he could still walk into the convention and come out the Republican nominee and completely shut Donald Trump out because they've done a smart job of recruiting people to be delegates. And here in Iowa, like I said, at the district conventions, we elected three delegates per house district. That's a total of 12. Then at the state party convention, we will be electing in another block of people that will be elected to be delegates as well, which includes Governor Branstead, the state party chairman, the state party now, now those are not called super delegates. They're not super delegates. They are elected by the body of the convention, though. Okay. At the state convention. Do we have what the Democrats call super delegates? No, we do not. We do not have super delegates. All right. Do delegates uh, run for this? Uh... Yes, they actively campaign. Okay. And they com- campaign to the delegates... That are, I mean, when I say the delegates that attend the conventions, the district convention, the state convention. All right. So they send them letters, make phone calls, emails, you know, pester them just like normal candidates, pester the electorate. So, all right. Have you ever been to a national convention? I've never been to a national convention. Okay. Um, neither have I. Um, what's the likelihood that Donald Trump isn't going to get it on the first ballot? I would say right now, right now. We've got a big I'm, election. I'm gonna, we've got primaries today. Will Ro- this is Will Rogers handicapping it. The likelihood that Donald Trump will not get the threshold and and win on the that Donald Trump will walk into the convention shy of the committed delegates is probably almost a ninety percent certainty. Wait, that he'll walk in with enough? No, that he won't walk in. Will not walk in. Now, so what's the likelihood 90% that ninety percent chance he won't go on chance. the first ballot? That's the Will Rogers handicap. Well, I'll, I'll take your handicap. Okay. Then on the second, so then when they vote on the first ballot, I don't believe Donald Trump will win, even if there's flexibility for delegates to move over to him. Now, when is the first vote? Is that first night, second night, third night? I'm not exactly familiar okay. with what the schedule is for the convention. Okay. It'll be fairly early on. They got okay. it. And, and again, this might take five, six, ten ballots. Who knows what this could go to? But the first ballot will not go to Donald Trump. You're, you're predicting. Predicting that it will not go to Donald Trump. He, may, he might actually win the first ballot in the sense, but not have the number of delegates required the to 12, win. The 1236. Yep. Okay. So then everybody, excuse me, everybody's fair game. Yep. Every delegate can do whatever they want to do. Yep. And what I heard you say, or, well, wait, I, did, I, didn't, I don't know if I heard you say this, but I heard, I've heard this said on television. Jeez, here I go. Now I'm quoting Fox. There goes my integrity. Um, that Cruz is really doing a good job. He is is masterminding the rallying of unbonded and bonded delegates. Yes. Bonded, is that the right term? They are delegates that are binded. Binded. Yeah. That are bound. He's really working hard to make sure that second ballot could be his. That's what I'm hearing. That is a very strong, again, potential that they are electing people through the delegate process that will, be, that will have to vote Donald on the first ballot. But once it's over with, then they will vote Cruz the rest of the way home. Who's got the highest, uh, um, um, I'd, I'd like to change my vote factor in, among delegates? Is it Trump or Cruz? 
Obviously, Rubio wishes they could. Carson wishes they could. Whoever else had one or two delegates wishes they could. The the person that the person that the unbound delegates are when they on the second ballot favors favors currently Ted Cruz. But I don't know that it's enough to get him to the promised land. But but at at what point then what? Then then you go to a third ballot. So then you go to a third ballot. Now you have the opportunity for people, even before then, to start making deals. Okay? okay. And what I mean by deal making is like Marco Rubio has, I'm just gonna use a number and I not I don't know the exact count, but 120 delegates. Okay. So Marco Rubio could make a deal with Donald Trump, and Donald Trump could say, Marco. I want you to be my vice presidential candidate. And he can go out and say, you're going to be my VP. And I'm going to, you tell your 110 people to support me. So on the second ballot, Donald Trump could potentially win. Or he could do the same thing with John Kasich. Ted Cruz could do the same thing with either one of those individuals. Ted Cruz there's might not enough his- sitting out there outside of Trump and and uh, Cruz to really make a difference. But is there? It, what it could do is send a signal to other people at the convention that might have been a Ted Cruz supporter, but not like 100% Ted Cruz supporter. They could say, oh, well, maybe Donald looks a little more attractive now because he's got Marco Rubio standing next to him on the stage okay. or John Kasich standing next to him. So all of a sudden, this becomes a little more of a... Uh, again, this is the term brokered convention. Yeah. The idea is, is that there's going to be some bartering, some brokering, some people going back and forth to, to make a deal. And that deal could be nothing that's mischievous, mischievous or uh, malfeasant or unethical. It's just that it's something where you, you make a deal to unify the party. All right. So does Donald Trump... Should Donald Trump have already chosen his vice president? Should Cruz have nope. already chosen? No, nope, but I think Cruz actually could potentially consider doing it. And then after t- after today, we're going to see Donald Trump probably sweep the majority of all the delegates that are in play today. So what's going to happen after that is, is Ted Cruz is going to have one more chance to really suppress Donald Trump's delegate count number. Okay? If he can... You'll, he wants to do it. So what he could do is potentially say, I'm going to ask Marco Rubio to be my vice presidential nominee at the national convention. Or I'm going to ask John Kasich. That could send a message to Republican voters out there, wait and just let the convention dis- decide this moving forward. Now, when Donald Trump says, I'm going to choose Marco Rubio as my vice presidential candidate, is that sticking? Is that law? Is that golden? Is that the truth? I mean, you're not going to make a deal like that at the national convention and then walk away from it. All right. What about uh, Will Rogers is our guest, Polk County uh, chair of the Republicans here in Polk County. They've got a big event coming up and you're invited. Ben Sass, the senator from the great state of Nebraska, will be speaking this Friday. Yes. And Ben's one of the rising stars of the Republican Party. Actually, he's been very critical of Donald Trump in the last few months. Um, and one of the reasons why is, is because Ben Sass tells people he's an American first, he's a conservative second, and he's a Republican third. Mm. And one of the reasons why, you know, we are we asked Senator Sass to come to Iowa to kind of explain that message to us and, and help people understand what it is that we're looking for in our next president. You can get tickets at polkgop.com, P-O-L-K-G-O-P.com. It's Friday night. Where is it? West Des Moines Marriott. West Des Moines Marriott. All right. Um, when we come back, I want to talk about a third party. Donald Trump tweeted today that Bernie Sanders ought to go out and run as a third party candidate. Um, obviously, there was some talk early on of a pledge made that I think everybody but Donald made, or did Donald make it Donald too? Donald made a pledge not to run as a third party candidate. Okay. Um, and will he have to hold to that? I think you will. Okay. All right. Will Rogers is here. And later on, why I should be your Polk County chairman next time. I mean, really, J. Michael Mack, just me. Just vote for Mack. No, I don't want the job, but I do want to hear what it entails. We'll do that next live with Will. Northern Lights Pizza's amazing garlic butter makes amazing breadsticks. Now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, High V, and Graziano's. Northern Lights Pizza. 
I'm Brian Leach, owner of Service Legends, and my position is Chief Talent Officer. I'm Nicholas Wonderscheid. I am Bernie Hobbs. And I'm the Service Manager. Marketing Director and Client Relations Manager. Everything that we do is about ensuring that we exceed your expectations. Our clients are important to us, 100% satisfaction. We're not just focused on heating and cooling. That's the easiest part of our job, actually, is fixing furnaces and air conditioners. Everyone that we come in touch with, we want to improve lives. Bottom line is, we've got our installation guarantees, 25% energy savings guarantee, comfort guarantee, temperature selection guarantee, property protection guarantee. 100% satisfaction guaranteed, fixed rate or it's free. All of those guarantees are backed up with a 100% money back guarantee to hold ourselves accountable to making sure that you get what you're after. Just fixing the problem today, if they have another problem five days down the road, it's still a fixed rate or it's free. We use what's called straightforward pricing. Our technicians are gonna give you an exact to the penny price on what it's gonna take before they move forward with any repair. That way you know what to expect. It's the same price every day. No surprises. If you get off work at five o'clock in the afternoon, you come home, you realize that, oh, my furnace is broken. Now you need to call somebody out that night. You shouldn't have to pay more for that. We're guaranteeing service 24-7. We run afternoons, evenings, nights, weekends. We're staffed to work that. Phone rings at 3 in the morning. You'll get one of our representatives answering the phone every time. We're not sending you out to Timbuktu in some call center. It's our service legend team members, our mission control team. I'll take a call anytime. And then they answer the phones same way during the day as they do at night. It's a great day at your service company. How can we make you smile? That's the only way to provide true 24-hour service. When you're able to let somebody actually live in their home safely when they weren't able to do that before, where they don't have to stay up at night and worry about is the heat going to come back on? Are we going to freeze the pipes? Is the baby in the room next door going to be sick because they got too cold? When you're able to help somebody overcome challenges like that, that's impacting a lot. That makes a difference. I get goosebumps thinking about it. I love the team. I love the people that I work with. <laughs> we have fun, but we work hard. I call them my ambassadors of legendary service. If you could just envision what that is, that's who we're sending to your home. They literally will call in, pick up the phone and call and say, hey, I want to talk to your manager. And I get on the phone, they're like, that technician that was at my house was the greatest technician ever. That's cool to me. We want to brighten people's days. Every person that we have going into the house has gone through an extensive background check. Drug testing, we have a very thorough interview process that one out of 140 people make it through. If we promise you something, that's what you're going to get, no matter what. We're here when you need us to protect the safety and comfort of your family. If you're not happy, we're going to make it right. If we're willing to put 100% money back guarantee on what we do, what type of work do you think we do? Give us a call. We're there for you 24-7, 365 days a year. Enough said. Mm. 22 minutes before 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock, Salem Radio Network News. And then Hank, the Bible Answer Man at one ask hank You can call in. It's live worldwide. I'm J. Michael McCoy, Bob Montserrat at my uh, side with the Service Legends Truth Talk text line at 515-809-0993. Will Rogers, Polk County Republican Chair, is my guest. And let's go to the, let's go to the, as Howard Cosell would say, let's go to the booth where our producer Jeb is standing by with uh, some information that you think we should give to our audience, even though the person sharing it didn't want to come on the air. And, and I'm okay with that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, so we had a caller call in, and actually they had a great website for us to look at. And those of you looking on the live stream right now can see this. It's called thegreenpapers.com. Oh, look at that. He's got it up on the website. So this has all the information that you would ever need about delegates. And I don't know if you're as confused as I am, but uh, it is necessary to see some of this and kind of look at uh, when things are going on and how many delegates are involved. So it actually gives you all the times and information for when you can see these going on. So for here, you see Pennsylvania primary, and that's just one example, 17 of 71 delegates. And uh, it just has a lots of information. And uh, from what I'm seeing here, the mission statement even says it, uh, they're not uh, biased. So this, this might be a good... This is just the 411. Yeah, just the 411, thegreenpapers.com. Wow. Have you ever heard of those, Will? You know, this is new, but uh, if you go back down to Pennsylvania, you can actually see the... Um, you can actually see on the green papers there, there's 17 of, I believe, uh, 71. So there's going to be uncommitted delegates that are going to be allotted to go to the national convention. They're uncommitted walking into the convention. Wow. So um, they could be wooed by Ted Cruz, Donald Trump, you know. Now, we know Cruz knows this system because he's, even though he likes to paint himself as an outsider, he's definitely an insider. He's a United States senator, for heaven's sakes, from the great state of Texas. But... 
has Trump figured this out yet? Is this new guy that he hired, whoever he is? I mean, this is certainly something that um, even prior to the caucus, I remember calling a couple of the campaigns and asking them if they had a national delegate strategy. And they responded with no. They had no national delegate strategy. And I questioned that and said they might need to start considering that. This was months in advance of the caucus because the likelihood was is that if no one won the party nomination outright prior to the convention, that there would be a convention fight. And I think we were more in tune to this because two years ago, we had a third district special nominating convention where Congressman Young was the candidate that yep. ended up winning the party nomination yep. and eventually went on to become and our Zahn congressman. went in as a favorite, and then somebody was number two, and then there was uh, Young. David Young was the fifth placed vote getter fifth. in the primary, and on the first ballot was the fifth placed vote getter on the primary uh, in the special nominating convention. But because he was everybody's second choice, as people f- dropped out, he picked up their, those people's support and ended up be- winning the nomination. Now, see, I, I, here's my fear. My fear is is, is if this happens at the convention where Donald Trump does not win the nomination and Cruz or whoever gets it, I likely it would be Cruz. I'm afraid, uh, I fear, I fear the uh, violent, physical, verbal, emotional pushback by Trump fans and supporters. You know, you can't control other people's actions. Uh, if, if somebody's going to take up violence, if somebody's going to, you know, go out and do things to destroy the Republican Party or its candidates, then that's their choice. Um, we can't, we can't, and, and if Donald Trump doesn't, and, and again, I don't suspect that, I don't, I don't want to say that Donald Trump's going to lose or win or whatever, or Ted Cruz. What I, what I do know that is I'll be fine with the outcome no matter what it is. No matter who it is of those men, you're comfortable that any of those guys can beat Hillary. I am fine with whoever it is, whether they, you know, look, when I say this, I think that Hillary Clinton is the most duplicitous human being on the face of the earth, and that no matter who we would nominate, they would be a better choice than her. And as the Polk County Republican chairman, I'm going to do everything in my power to make sure that that candidate wins here in Polk County. Our Republican nomination. Will Rogers is my guest. He's a chair of the Polk County Republicans stepping down after this year. And we'll talk a little bit later about what you No, I mean, you, the listener would want to do if you want his job, because if you're a registered Republican, you're eligible. Well, how about if they're registered Democrat? Can they change? That's good. That's not going to be good. That, but the you know people are going to know that. We're going to call they, that they have the to be Trump voted. Move. Yeah. yeah. All right. Um, okay. So just 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 dumb little Mac over here who you know ho bunk little boy hillbilly city. To me, there's something in my head that says Trump and Bernie ought to get together, and Bernie ought to agree to be Trump's vice president, and all those people in the world or in the nation that are so unhappy with the, 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 the status quo would just rush to elect them. You know, I, I'm glad this is a God-fearing Christian radio station because I'd, <laughs> I'd probably usually throw a few expletives at you right now, Mac, on that idea. Um, <laughs> no, that is, a, that is the worst idea I've ever heard. Really? Yes. Well, first of all, let me say this. I mean, I'm, I'm going to say that Bernie Sanders, while... I would not necessarily agree with anything that he says. Um, he certainly represents a certain small, uh, I would say he represents a good portion of the Democrat Party, but uh, really doesn't represent the majority of Americans. Okay. Um, Donald Trump, I'm not going to say that he is a conservative nor a liberal. Right. I would almost consider him to be apolitical. I don't think he particularly cares about certain what we would call moral issues as like myself or you or some of your listeners would would um, would care to have him represent but I think he would work well with Republicans 
I don't think Bernie Sanders would work at all with Republicans. Well, I don't, I don't want any of Bernie's politics. I just want his votes. I just, I just want to beat Hillary. I mean, I, I am one of those people. Yeah. I, well, you can, there's a path to beating Hillary without having Bernie Sanders be on the ticket. So who's the best VP choice for Trump? Give me the top well, two or three. Let me give you, right now, just to let the people that have been vetted, I think is always important. So let's just start with Marco Rubio. Marco Rubio, by the way, um, if you want to look at him, this is just the purely on the what value he has. First of all, he's not going to be running for U.S. Senate at, Senate. Because he's already given that opportunity up. So now he's basically on the outside looking in. So why not put him on the pallet as your vice presidential candidate? He does extremely well with women over the age of 55. The, he's just a cute little boy. He's just a cute... You just want to grab his little cheek and, and say, what a cute little boy. And, and we know in politics, a big factor is likability and looks. Yeah. It's unfortunate that that's the case, but that's how superficial American voters are. So... Because he looks good, he sounds good, he would get a lot of support. Plus, like I said, women over the age of 55. And that's not just Republican women. That's Democrat and independent women that he'd bring along. And Trump is weak in that area. And Trump's weak in that area. Absolutely. So he helps him there. All right. Ted Cruz. Again, Ted Cruz would help solidify the base. He would get a lot of the Republican, evangelical... Christian, yeah, you know, voters. And he knows how to run the Senate, which is the VP's job, and and it gives it eventually gives Ted Cruz a path again towards working towards the White House. Yeah. Plus, if he feels like he's going to have an active role in the Trump administration, I think he would be likely to take something like that. John, but believe me, if and we would if Ted Cruz leaves the Senate in Texas, we can replace uh, him with another Republican. Okay. Yeah. If we look at John Kasich, I would say John Kasich's been a fine governor. I think he does a great job for his state. I don't agree with everything he has to say either, but majority, he checks a lot of majority of the boxes in terms of being a good Republican, okay? At the end of the day, it would be, I think, a more of a challenge right now to replace him with a Republican governor in the state of Ohio. Now, there are some people there that I think would do a good job as candidates that are current elected officials on the down ballot or congr- members of Congress. So I think those are your three most logical choices immediately to look at. All right. There's other people out there, but that's just the three that I would start with. Will Rogers is my guest. He's stepping down as the chairman of the Polk County Republicans. I'm going to put my big toe in the water here. But not just, until just, after the election. No, I know that. I know. I'm just, just, just talking. Just, There's a lot of work to do before then. See, work. That's why I don't want the job. <laughs> From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Credit cards are like grandkids. They love you, sometimes get out of control, and it's fun to get a new one. Who can stop them from piling on? Hi, I'm Tom Coates with Consumer Credit of Des Moines. At the end of the day, you can return the grandkids, but you're stuck paying off bad credit card debt. We'll help you put the fun back into using credit cards responsibly. Right, kids? Yeah! If you need help getting credit cards off your back, call Consumer Credit of Des Moines. Rockton Prevention is celebrating 25 years of creating a caring community. We want to say thank you to the tens of thousands of Rock High School mentors that have carried our message of health, love, and encouragement to over 1.5 million children, teachers, and parents. Our mentors teach children methods and skills to prevent bullying and drug use. Thank you to all the school administrators, teachers, and counselors for the opportunity to serve you. Rock on, fair citizens. Rock on. This is Pat McManus for Rock and Prevention, the Richard O. Jacobson Foundation, and this station. Northern Lights Pizza, your home of the tasty crust. Our garlic butter sauce now available in 12-ounce bottles at Northern Lights, hy and Graziano. Northern Lights Pizza. Hi, my name is David Burrier, your Hope Coach. I host a live weekly talk show called I've Been There every Thursday afternoon at 5.30, right here on webcast1live.com and on my weekly radio program Saturday mornings at 10 on Truth Network 99.3 FM. I interview common, everyday people who have survived incredible life challenges and who testify to God's faithfulness in the midst of their storms. So join me as we bring a message of hope and encouragement. Everybody needs hope. I know, because I've been there. From the REMAX Real Estate Concept Studios, this is Webcast One Live. Ten minutes before the top of the hour, 4.50. 
coming up at 458.59. We have Salem Radio Network News and then Hank, the Bible Answer Man. one ask hank You can call him nationwide. We'd love to have you on the national show. All right. I, I have no interest in being the chairman of the Polk County Republicans. I mean, I can't think of a... There's very, there's a lot of jobs I wouldn't have, and that'd be one of the top ones. You know how I know that? I'll tell you how I know that. So I've had a business in Clive for many, many years. (laughs) And I used to threaten Dennis Henderson, who's a very good city manager, very good city manager, that he better hope I never move to Clive. Because if I ever move to Clive, I'm going to run for mayor. Now, the year that I moved to Clive was the year that um, the mayor stepped down and there was no incumbent. So it was a, a good time to run. So I went to Dennis and I said, just is there, a, is there a mayor trainee day or something that I could just understand what it was all about? He put me on the Citizens Budget Committee for the city of Clive. Let me play back for you the phone call that I made to my wife in the first potty break in the first meeting of my first Clive Citizen Budget Committee. Ring, 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 ring. Hello, Mrs. Mike here. Who's this? Honey, I'm never running for mayor, ever. Okay, come home. I, I knew after 20 minutes that I could not handle that bureaucracy. It is not within my temperament. So, uh, But I want to know what it takes to be that person. And you said thousands of dollars and thousands of hours out of your own time. You're not paid a nickel. What's the reward? What's the, you're not a power broker, well, one of the things that I mentioned earlier was that um, the reward that I get out of it is is the ability to help good people get elected to office and help them run with their candidacies. And we have some really great people that run for office, especially at a local level, that would never make, you know, they're not national political figures. But, you know, in the last election cycle, I was able to help Governor Branstead, Joni Ernst, David Young. But I also got to help Zach Nunn run for office. Zach Mm -hmm. was one of our candidates that ran in Altoona. He defeated Joe Riding, who was the incumbent Democrat. And Zach is just a wonderful young man. We have also John Landon, Brad Zahn, Kevin Kester, Jack Whitver, Jake Heifel, Peter County, Chris Egan. He's a good guy. These are all really fine individuals. Yeah. And we want to continue to have more and more of these type of people run for office here in Polk County. We've got three... We'll have three races this year where we're going to have Republican challengers running against Democrats. That's in House District 31, which is Pleasant Hill on the east side of Polk County. House District 36, which is Beaverdale. And then we will also have uh, Urban, Ur- House District 40, which is Urbandale. And we want to, and I'm going to be out there door knocking, lit dropping, making phone calls, putting up yard signs, helping raise money, spending money of my own, and doing everything that we can to make sure that we position those candidates to win this November. Did, did you mention counties? District? Yeah, Peter did, County. Okay, that's no, he's the, not. Peter County's is a, that's not House District. That's uh, West Des Moines. Okay. It's Peter's. All right. But he's got a challenger. Um, I think every Republican running has a challenger. Okay. Now, how viable those challengers are, I don't know. But we, as a party, we're looking to take out three or take on three Democrat candidates that are incumbent democrats oh those are three you're trying to beat the incumbent and give us a majority in the house well we already have a majority in the house but we want to obviously add to it yeah all right so um what's your day like as well you know let me just say you know there's my normal work day which is of course uh you know and let's just say an eight to five job or eight to four job eight four three eight to four thirty you know sometimes i get in at seven sometimes i get in at nine doesn't depend on what the day looks like but any, any given day, I'm meeting with people that are candidates or prospective candidates, elected officials, fundraising, um, talking to prospective employees that'll work Fundraising. For is that a lot of your job? I, asking, asking, for, for money? asking for money is a part of my job. Absolutely. Okay. All right. we, uh, w- this year, our budget is looking like we want to raise and spend, uh, well, we want to raise at least $200,000 to help spend on our operations, but also on hiring door knockers to go out and go door to door to talk to people. We're also going to be doing lots of events around the city of Des Moines celebration, the Latino Heritage Festival, the Juneteenth Festival. We're going to be at Cinco de Mayo down in Valley Junction with a voter registration booth. So, I mean, we have, I have people that are helping me out. We have full-time 
um, consultants. We have a full-time fundraising consultant. We have a full-time executive director consultant. We have people that are doing technology and communications for us. We have a team of great people. I could not do this at all and be anywhere near effective if I didn't have wonderful team of people behind me and my co-chair, my secretary, our treasurer, and then all of those consultants, which are people that we pay because their time is professional time. And so we are. And your time isn't? Well, my time is, but this is a position that I chose and ran to. I'm a volunteer. I chose this opportunity. Right. Now, mind you, at the end of the day, um, if somebody wants to start learning what it takes to do this job, here's some of the skills that I tell people they should be good at. They should probably have a background in having some ability to fundraise. I think that people that have some ability to organize events or organize... I can do that. Okay. Well, for example, we organized 177 precinct caucuses that went on in Polk County Bob, this last election. Would, this, would you help me with that? 172? 177. Seven, 170. Would you, could you help like with 175 of them? And I'll take care of two. I don't think so. Well, oh, come on, Bob. <laughs> so organizing events... And then also doing, you know, some level of communications with that as well. Having an operations background, ha having a, the skills to put together a budget and do financing, planning, other types. It's, it's just a job that, believe me, if I was 22 years old, I would not have had the skills to be an effective chairman. Yeah. I'm 46 years old through my various jobs and political jobs that I've held, um, but my professional jobs as well. I've been able to pull together the skills that hopefully have made Polk County a very effective organization. Well, and you did. You did an excellent job. Uh, everybody uh, that uh, I get an opportunity to speak of in our area, you know who really thinks a lot of you is Tom Henderson, who's the head of the Democratic Party for Polk mm -hmm. County. He just, he, he just says wonderful things about you. I appreciate that from Tom. Yeah, he's a good guy. All right. Uh, okay, take my name out of the hat. Okay. I don't think, if Bob's not going to come along with me, I can't. Sorry. I, I just can't believe you wouldn't help me. <laughs> it's just a few districts. So can you say, do you have a favorite to take your place? No, nope. I'm, I'm going to say this at this point. There are some people within our leadership. I would encourage them to consider running. Um, there are other people out there. But like I said, no matter what, at the end of the day, it's going to take a team of the right people. And I mean, people that are willing to work together, you know, concede to each other that you know everybody's not going to agree or get along on everything all the time but at the same time at the end of the day they're still committed to what our mission is at polk county which is electing republicans to office and once we have majorities advancing our party platform and our long-term vision is and will continue to be building a permanent republican majority in polk county 20 seconds what's next for will rogers you know, Will Rogers wants to spend a little bit more time with his wife and daughter. He also wants to spend a little more time. He's going to be coming in as the co-president at his synagogue. So the next two years, he's going to be at least in a leadership. He's still, in, I'm already in the leadership position at my synagogue, but I'm being in a larger leadership position there. And then finally, what I'd like to do is look at other political opportunities beyond 2014 the or 2016. So, Thanks for being here today. You're always a big help. Appreciate the time when you come in. Of course, Tom Coates is usually here. Tom Coates lost his mother-in-law early this morning, so our, our prayers are with the Coates family. Until I see you again, remember, please forgive those that need to be forgiven, because as you forgive, that's how you'll be forgiven by your Father and God. We're coming back live. Thanks for listening.